Awaji Island is located in the Seto Inland Sea between Honshu and Shikoku. According to an ancient text, when the gods created the archipelago of Japan, Awaji was the first island they created. Long known for its beautiful natural scenery and high quality foods, especially onions, Awajijima has also become a popular location for domestic tourism, offering a wide range of things to do and enticing locations to check out. Our first stop on Awaji Island. This is a great place to stretch your legs after a long journey and get a taste for what the region has to offer. Awaji Road Station is basically a public market offering local produce, souvenirs, tourist goods, and food stalls. And some pretty decent scenery as well. And maybe it was because of the long drive to get there, but the food and drink options all looked really appealing. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. Yume Butai, or Dream Stage in English, is a sprawling complex of parks, gardens, and other facilities built into the hillside overlooking the east coast of Awaji Island. Along with several other locations on Awaji, Yume Butai was designed by the famous Japanese architect Tadao Ando. In case you've never heard of him, Ando-san is well known for his zen-inspired minimalistic style and for incorporating elements of the surrounding natural environment into his designs. This area is the 100 Step Garden, a maze-like series of walking paths and flower beds offering amazing views of the coastline. And great workout potential, especially if you jog up to the top of the steps. I'm pretty sure there was more than 100 of them. Anyway, we spent most of our time in this area. But Yume Butai has a lot more to offer, including a hotel, a conference center, and various other botanical and recreational public amenities. From there, we headed down to the southern tip of the island, only about an hour by car, to Hukula in the town of Minami Awaji. This fishing village turned tourist town is actually located near the other bridge to Awaji, the one connecting to Kagawa Prefecture on the island of Shikoku. Aside from the scenery and general atmosphere, which are great, there are a few popular attractions that caught our attention. One is Ningyo Gekiza, a traditional puppet theater featuring one of Japan's oldest performing arts. We were considering watching a performance until we realized that it happened to be closed that day. Another was local seafood. My wife had her eye on a well-reviewed seafood restaurant in the area, but due to time and budgetary constraints, we decided to opt for a more casual seafood bowl restaurant in the port. And we don't regret the choice. Other popular attractions in the area include sport fishing and a dolphin park neither of which we did. Probably the best known tourist attraction here is the Uzushio or Whirlpool Cruise. And in spite of the stormy and rainy weather that day, we did make that one. These cruises are a popular draw for visitors who come to see the whirlpools that form here in the Naruto Strait, 
where water from the Pacific Ocean mixes with the warmer waters of the Seto Inland Sea during the changing of tides. You can also apparently get a great view from the pedestrian walkway that runs along the underside of the O Naruto Hashi Bridge. Anyway, the cruise was quite fun. Personally, I think the exciting weather added to the experience. An onion themed hilltop tourist center with gift shops, silly photo ops, a small museum, and apparently tasty food. Oh, and long lineups, hence the apparently. The place was absolutely packed when we got there. How about that famous crane game with real awaji onions as the prize? 30 minutes wait. Even the gift shop lines were prohibitive. But in spite of the fact that I couldn't eat or play or buy anything there, I still couldn't help enjoy the festive atmosphere. And those views. Japanese Buddhist temples tend to be constructed according to a very specific, traditional architectural style. When you arrive at Honpukuchi, known as the Water Temple in English, you might initially think this to be the case here as well. The temple building looks pretty normal, right? But venture around back and we find something completely different. This is another location designed by the architect, Tadao Ando. The unique visual style of this temple is designed to lead visitors into a calm and reflective state of mind as they approach the entrance. And when they enter, well, I don't want to ruin the impact by showing too much here. What's a better way to follow up an afternoon of spiritual reflection then a trip to the local brewery. I'd been hoping to have a drink on site, but the timing didn't really work out for that, so I bought a couple of bottles and brought them back to the hotel room to drink later. Back home in Mie Prefecture now, 
and just enjoying my last Awaji beer. It was a really fun couple of days. For a small island, Awaji really packs in a lot of interesting things to do. Our trip this time was limited mostly to the east side of the island, but I've heard that the west coast is actually more popular with visitors due to its beautiful beaches and resort-like atmosphere. And then there's Awaji Anime Park, a collection of small theme parks based on characters from popular animation and games, etc. Awaji is also becoming known for its wellness resorts and meditation centers. If this kind of thing appeals to you, you might want to check out this place. Personally, I plan to be a regular visitor here. After my channel hits a million subscribers and my financial situation changes, ha ha. Awaji doesn't have any one must-see attraction or destination. If you want the oldest temple or the tallest tower or the biggest Buddha, there are other places in Japan you should visit first. This country has a lot of first-class tourist destinations, and if it's your first time visiting, you'll likely choose somewhere with more impact, which is probably why we saw like only three other foreign tourists the whole time we were there. But actually, I think I enjoyed Awaji specifically because of how low-key it is. It's not trying to be some kind of curated cultural experience. It just is what it is. Cool, quirky, and a lot of fun. I do plan on heading back there again, but next time I'd like to combine it with a trip to Shikoku, or one of several other nearby locations that have been on my list for a while. How about you? If you had a couple of days to spend in Western Japan, what locations would be on your list? As usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Come by. Oh, the box my camera's been resting on the whole time here. If you buy three, then they give you this cool little carrying box.